Hello, welcome to the Week in Parliament, our look at events in Westminster. In a moment, I'll be discussing some current issues with three new members of Parliament. So, coming up, it was the week when Prime Minister's questions returned for the first time since the election. He promised £12 billion of welfare cuts, and I'm asking where those welfare cuts are coming from. Absolutely no answer from the Labour Party about housing association tenants. Also on the programme, it was 40 years ago when we had to decide whether to say goodbye to Europe. Does anyone remember that vote in 1975? We've had more results since we uh, have come on the air. You see yes is now showing at 67% and the no vote at 33%. And fond memories of Charles Kennedy, the Lib Dem politician who had the human touch. If we could all carry ourselves with a little more of the honesty, wisdom and humility of Charles Kennedy, politics would be held in much higher esteem than it is today. But first, I'm joined in the studio by three new members of Parliament who are still learning the ropes of Westminster. Patrick Grady is the SNP member for Glasgow North. Suella Fernandez is the new Conservative member for Fareham in Hampshire. And Rachel Maskell in the, is the Labour MP for York. Welcome to the Week in Parliament and, indeed, welcome to Parliament. And I've got to ask you for your first impressions, and maybe in particular, Rachel Maskell, what surprised you most about Westminster? Well, it's an incredible place to work, and I think we do feel the weight of responsibility which our constituents have put on us in order to deliver an agenda for them. And I, coming onto the opposition benches, that's very much what I'm there to do, to make sure that I hold the government to account over their agenda. And therefore, I found the systems actually working against that process. So I asked the Prime Minister a question, and he didn't answer it, and I found that really frustrating. Suella Fernandez, what surprised you most of all? What surprised me has been the opportunity for change and carrying on and the reality that now that we've got a Conservative majority, we can actually get things done with no kind of shackles or no, uh, nothing holding us back. And having that prospect is really exciting. Patrick Grady, first impressions? Yeah, I don't think any of us in the 56 or the 50 new SNP MPs really knew what to expect when we've come down. Um, but amongst that group, there's been a tremendous amount of solidarity. Um, the fact that we've, right from the start, been able to work together as a cohesive group, supporting each other, uh, sharing our experiences, um, and then as soon as we've had a chance, being able to get up in the chamber and start speaking out uh, on behalf of Scotland and behalf of our constituents, I think has been a really uh, pleasant and encouraging start. Just a quick question. Do you think there's adequate preparation for life as an MP, or is it just a question of diving in at the deep end and hoping for the best, Rachel? There's a lot of learning to do, and often it's technical learning, like setting up your office and making sure you get the systems in place. And we've had a really really good induction and support from the House of Commons staff in being able to achieve that. But life as an MP is very different from constituency to constituency and therefore the responsibilities we take up will be different. Suella Fernandez, taken by surprise at all? Uh, I mean, I've been a barrister for 10 years, which has involved working with legislation, working with policy, speaking up for people in a very active way. And I feel that those skills transfer very nicely to, to Parliament. Patrick Gray. Yeah, well, I mean, we're all human beings and we're all bringing different experiences and different perspectives to the job. I, I think it is quite an exciting and a, it can be exhilarating and exhausting in equal measure. Um, but it's a huge privilege to be elected. And I think it's right to say that there has been a lot of support from the, the staff of the House of Commons, who, are, of course, are completely politically neutral, but are going out of their way to help, especially the new members, find their way around and make sure we can be as effective as possible on behalf of our constituents. Now, we've got to talk about Prime Minister's questions. We've had in the last few days the first PMQs of this new parliament. Now, at the end of the last parliament, PMQs was coming in for a lot of criticism, too rowdy, and the exchanges were a little bit childish. What was your first impression, Suella Fernandez? I really enjoyed it. I felt it was, um, you know, all 326 Conservative MPs were there. The Prime Minister gave a fantastically strong and confident performance. He made it very clear that Labour was still trotting out the same message that failed so catastrophically with the electorate only a few weeks ago uh, and nothing much has changed on the other side. Right, Rachel Maskell, now of course you were lucky enough to get uh, a question at Wednesday's Prime Minister's Question Time. I'll ask you for your uh, impressions in a moment. Let's first of all take a look at that clip now. The right to buy plan, three social houses will need to be sold to generate enough revenue to build one new one, leaving one and a half thousand families in York without a home for well over two years. 
Is this what the Prime Minister means by aspiration? What's clear from this question time is on this side of the House, we understand home ownership, aspiration, people wanting to get on. The party opposite, after the most catastrophic election defeat in years, can't even begin to spell aspiration. David Cameron replying to you there. Do you find it an intimidating atmosphere to put a question? I didn't find it intimidating at all. I saw it's my responsibility. But what I saw was not getting the answer, and that was the frustration I felt in the process, because Prime Minister's Question Time is about holding the Prime Minister to account, and therefore it does make a farce of our political system if the Premier of our country refuses to answer questions and rather sidesteps them. Patrick Grady, you were also fortunate to get called. Uh, let's take a look at your question now. The Prime Minister might be aware of the ongoing case of my constituent, Dr Steve Foreman, who, despite his immense contribution to the music and creative scene in Glasgow, Scotland and around the world, the Home Office are seeing fit to try to deport back to the United Stop States. Me. Can the Prime Minister tell the House why people like Dr Foreman don't seem to be welcome in this country? Because if the Prime Minister can't run an immigration policy that works for Scotland, then I know a government up the road that would be very happy yeah. to take on the First of all, can I congratulate the Honourable Gentleman on his uh, election. I'm not aware of the specific case that he raises, but I will look at it urgently after Prime Minister's questions and see what I can do. So there we are, David Cameron replying to yours now. A little bit of hostility, a bit of needle in that question. Is that a, a taste of things to come, Patrick Grady? Well, we're here to do a job, you know. We're here to do a job for our constituents and also to speak up for the priorities of Scotland. And I was pleased to have the opportunity to do both of those things in that question to the Prime Minister. Now, I accept he won't know the ins and outs of the detail of the specific constituency case when it's raised immediately on the floor of the House. But I hope that he will respond. And, of course, he did sidestep the broader political point, which is that Scotland needs a very different immigration policy from that being pursued by the Conservative government. And the way to resolve that, in our view, is to devolve those powers to the Scottish Parliament. Now, no doubt we won't have to wait long, uh, Suella, before you are getting up at uh, PMQs. Do you think you've learned anything from the, the experience of your two colleagues here? Well, it is luck for the draw. Despite tabling a question for PMQs, I didn't get lucky this time. But um, I think you've got to uh, be a strong speaker. It's a very a strong atmosphere in the House of Commons. People are, it's a baying crowd um, and you've got to really uh, um, kind of get, get prepared to project your voice and uh, make your point. OK, now we were talking there about uh, the Scottish Parliament and of course devolution could well be a big theme in this Parliament with uh, mention in the Queen's speech. Uh, Rachel Maskell, do you think that uh, devolution and this northern powerhouse that we've heard a lot about, will that run and run throughout this Parliament? What I think is really important is that we have a real look at where power sits but also resources sit and what I would say is we need to go a step further and see devolution into local authority. Local authorities have been bereft of money in York, 46% cut they experienced under the last administration and therefore we need to make sure we invest in local government, invest in our local services because that provides the services to the community and therefore we may talk about macro structures but what's really important is delivering to people who are really struggling in communities at the moment with the basics in life like collecting the rubbish, filling the potholes, things that our communities need and also social care is taking such a draw on local government funds but the resources aren't there to back it up. With the Conservative government having to think now very hard about the North West, the North East, could the South Coast be the sort of area that will in a few years time say what about us? Well, I think the devolution um, proposals that we heard about yesterday do mark, uh, well, they reflect the historic agreement with Greater Manchester and the Northern Powerhouse as the framework for devolving powers on taxation and um, transport and um, uh, housing to enable that to happen. In terms of the South Coast, um, I, you know, I believe strongly in better, greater decision making for local people where uh, Whitehall gets stripped back out of interfering in people's lives and anything that furthers that I've, has got my support. Patrick Grady, with these matters of English devolution, will the SNP have a say in here? Will it, will it contribute to this debate on nor um, the northern devolution in England? Mm -hmm. Or will it stay right out saying this is an England-only issue? Yeah, our priority is more powers for the Scottish Parliament. You know, the Smith Commission report provides a floor rather than a ceiling for the kind of powers that we want to see. And, of course, a Scotland bill has been published uh, by the government which doesn't even live up to the proposals of the Smith Commission. So that has to be the priority. Devolution across uh, the rest of the United Kingdom is a matter for the people that live in the areas where power is being devolved right. to, I think. So you won't be taking part in votes on devolution in England? 
Well, I think we'll have to look at all the legislation that comes forward because we have to see what the impact is in Scotland of each piece of legislation that does come forward. I mean, the thing about English Votes for English Laws, of course, is that the Queen's speech said it would be done by amending the standing orders of the House of Commons, which I think is very concerning, and we're quite clear we'd want to see that happen and by legislation uh, rather than the standing orders. But our priority is a Scotland bill and more powers for the Scottish Parliament. I think we'll do English Votes for English Laws another day. Right. Thanks very much indeed for joining us, Patrick Grady. Uh, Rachel Maskell and uh, Suella Fernandez, thanks very much indeed for joining us on the week in Parliament.